all you Pokemon Masters! Welcome back to Shelby on Safari! Today we will be diving back into our Pokedexes to look at Sandslash, before heading into the real world to take a look at the incredible Pangolin. Be sure to stay tuned to the end because I am bringing in some up-to-date science to stop poachers and, if it was used in the Pokemon world, would make Team Rocket run for cover. Not that Team Rocket are poachers, but they kind of are because they steal other people's Pokemon. Or at least Jesse and James and Meow try to. So you ready? Let's get started. Little Sandshrew here evolves into Sandslash at level 22. Sandslash is a ground type Pokemon first introduced in Generation 1. However, in the Lola region, Sandslash is an ice and steel type. Even though the Pokedex entry does state that Sandslash is a mouse type Pokemon, it goes a little bit deeper than that because the Japanese name actually is Sandpan, which suggests that maybe the pangolin did have a bit of influence on the designers. Sandslash is typically depicted as bipedal, they can run on both of their hind legs. However, they can also go onto all fours. And as you can see, their back is covered in sharp quills. This will come in handy later. As their name suggests, they are good at slashing. They, it's drizzling outside. Ooh, who's going at this angle? Gee whiz. And I don't even have my glasses on and I can see it. That's saying something. As their name suggests, Sandslash is good at slashing. Surprise. They use their long claws not only for attacking, but also for burrowing. It's known that their claws and spikes can regularly come off, but will regrow back. Even though it's a ground type, Sandslash is quite adept at climbing trees, which is something they have in common with some pangolin species. In the Lola region, Sandslash is covered in ice. Their spikes look like icicles, which is pretty cool. And this they use for camouflage. The Lola Sandslash has hooks at the end of their claws. Why is this important? Well, in their icy terrain, they can use them to scale up icebergs. Going back to the original games, did you know that in Pokemon Red and Blue's beta, that Sandslash's original name was actually Sandstorm? That <laughs> sounds like a Marvel character, actually. That brings us to the pangolin. They are the world's only true scaly mammal. However, they are known for something far more upsetting. They are the world's most trafficked non-human mammal. And even though they bear resemblance to armadillos and anteaters, they are actually more closely related to cats, dogs, and bears of all things. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my video up here on five fast facts you need to know about pangolins. One of which is that there are eight different species of pangolin, four in Africa and four in Asia. However, all are threatened with extinction. Like Sandslash, pangolins have long claws that they use for burrowing, but they also use their claws to open up ant and termite nest because that is their food source which is why it's quite tricky to house pangolins in captivity. And just like how Sandslash has a regional variation, pangolins do as well. The four species of Asiatic pangolins have hair in between their scales, whereas the four African species of pangolin do not. Eating bugs is quite tricky work, so you need a good, solid, long, sticky tongue to get the grub. And that's precisely what the pangolin has. In fact, some pangolins have tongues longer than their entire bodies, and it attaches near their pelvis, just past their last set of ribs. Pangolins can close their ears and nose when hunting for bugs, which I don't think quite suits humans. So close your ears. There's me closing my ears, sticking my tongue out. Uh, nope, doesn't work. Maui is helping me this afternoon. As you can see, he is displaying his best pangolin impression for us all. Good job, Maui. Well done curling up in a ball. Yes. Oh, hold on, his tongue is sticking out. It's rather cute. Maui. Bite a little peepee dog. 
come. Oh, oh. Oh, he's exhausted, guys. Oh, he's the true star of the show. Sorry, pangolins. Let's talk defense. It's really hard for me not to start a defense, defense chant. Ah, take me back to my basketball and volleyball days. <laughs> As some of you Pokemon masters will know, each Pokemon starts out with basic stats, ranging from HP to special attack, and of course, defense. The base defense for a Sand Slash is 110, whereas for the Alolan Sand Slash, it's 120. Sand Slash can also use Iron Defense and Defense Curl to help boost those stats. But what defensive capabilities do Pangolins have? Well, they don't get the name Scaly Anteater, even though they're not anteaters, for no reason. They use their scales for protection. They act as armor to keep them safe, especially when they curl up into a ball, almost like they're using defense curl. In fact, pangolin scales cover almost their entire body, except the little bits on their face and their belly, which has soft hairs, which is why they curl up to protect that middle area in which they might be most vulnerable. Sand Slash can also roll up, both to defend itself and attack if necessary. They too roll up to defend their belly. However, the Alolan version of Sand Slash can't curl up to defend themselves because their thick icy spines prevent them from doing so. While the Sand Slashes have spikes on their back, pangolins have scales. But it's these scales that are making them heavily trafficked. But why? Pangolin scales are made up of keratin, which is the same material that makes up our hair, fingernails, and even rhino horns. But why is it so sought after? They have no proven medical value, but are still used nonetheless in traditional medicines. For many years, the Asian pangolins were hunted for this reason. But now that numbers have depleted, poachers are now going and getting African pangolins. The Zoological Society of London estimates that over 1 million pangolins have been poached over the last decade. That's more than rhinos, elephants, and tigers combined. No matter how much the pangolin might use defense curl or iron defense, they need our help. Conservationists around the world are working to raise awareness of the plight facing pangolins. I encourage you to check out the links below to ZSL's Edge of Existence program and read up about these amazing animals and see what you can do to help. What is the Edge of Existence? Well, it stands for Evolutionarily Distinct and Globally Endangered. Because pangolins don't really have a close living relative, as we saw, their closest relatives are more like cats, dogs, and bears, the carnivores, rather than anteaters and armadillos. They are evolutionarily distinct on the tree of life. And, as mentioned before, all eight living pangolin species are threatened with extinction. Over the past two years, scientists from the Zoological Society of London and experienced investigators from the University of Portsmouth have worked together to come up with a game plan to stop pangolin trafficking, or at least deter poachers from going after these incredible animals. They've been adapting forensic fingerprinting techniques to get poachers' fingerprints off the scales of pangolins and be able to track them down. It is incredible what collaboration amongst different disciplines can do, and this is no exception. For more information, check out the links in the description below. Having a strong defense is important, whether you're in a Pokemon battle or in the real world fighting to survive. They have their own regional variations, just like Sand Slash, and some pretty unique adaptations, like that ridiculously long tongue. Pangolins are incredible and well worth investing in to save for future generations. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed diving back into the world of Pokemon and meeting a real world Pokemon at that. Give a thumbs up if you dig a sand slash and let me know in the comments below which Pokemon you wanna see next. Have a great rest of your day and see you later. Bye.